Hello everybody and welcome back. So I've been on a Mac uh, installation run for the last couple of videos so might as well keep going with the new Mac OS Big Sur version 11. Finally out of the Mac OS X series here and we're going to do this and get this up and running for you on VMware Workstation whether it's 14, 15, 16, ESXi if you watched my previous video on how to get the, ins the unlocker installed on Workstation and ESXi, you're ready to go for all this. If you haven't, click the link above and it'll go ahead and show you how to do the Workstation and then go ahead and click again and you'll go ahead and get yourself a ESXi installation depending on what you're doing. Okay, now down below in the description, you will have the Big Sur um, ISO download um, that's what we're going to use for this. Also down below, you're going to have the unlocker tools as well. Um, so you don't have to kind of shuffle through the internet. I went ahead and took care of that link for you as well. So download both files down below. Make sure you got VMware Workstation up and running or ESXi up to your preference. And we'll show you how to do this. So let's get this going here, guys. Okay. So what we're going to do here is, again, we're going to make sure we download our two files. So open up my little file explorer here and you can see I have my Mac OS Big Sur 11.01 .01, and here's the ISO and it is 16 gigs so this will take depending on your internet connection anywhere from an hour to three hours four hours or 40 minutes less than that if you own know, again on the internet um, me I uh, took about an hour and a half to download this from the internet okay and this is down from down below. And then the same thing with this one. This only takes a few minutes. And inside here, the unlocker, if you haven't done it, from here, you're going to go ahead and run the unlocker. And then you're also going to have your Darwin ISOs. And we need these two ISOs. Well, technically, we need this ISO more than anything. So I'm just going to go ahead and put that bad boy right here. So realistically, if you've already unlocked your device, your workstation, your SXI, the only two things you'll need is Darwin ISO and the Big Sur. Both of them are available for download below. So I'm going to assume you went ahead and did all that. And now let's go ahead and start making this. Create new virtual machine. We're going to go custom. I'm going to go with 16, but you can go, like I said, all the way down to 14. Um, there are certain features that won't work with 14 and 15, but 16 and 7 will work just fine. Well, 16 and ESXi 7 will both work just fine. So I'm going to do 16. Click Next. Install Disk Image. Go to Downloads where I have it. And there's my image. All right. It won't detect the system because it has no idea how to read this, and that's fine. Go ahead and click Next. Apple. 10. Now, if you're having issues, and I've seen this before, you can always drop it down to 10.11 or 10.15, but I've been able to so far install it uh, with 11. But say if you don't have this, say you're using Workstation 15, uh, you will probably have to do it at 10.15 or 10.14, and I believe ESXi only goes up to uh, 10.15 as well. So go ahead and pick the version that you'll need. And right here, I already have installed. We're going to type in Big Sur. Now, this is where it gets a little finicky because technically you should do two and two or two and four depending on your core processors and everything, but I don't have that. So I only have a single processor, like most people do, but I do have a quad core. Actually, I think I have more than that, but we're just going to stick it to four cores. Go ahead and click next. Now, the recommended is eight gigs. Um, but again, on my station I have here for this demo, I don't have enough to be able to have my computer run properly with 8 gigs just for an OS here. So I'm going to do 4. It works just fine, though. Go ahead and click Next. Here we're going to click on Bridge Networking. Click Next. Leave the I.O. controller alone. Leave the virtual disk type alone. Create a new one. And we're going to stick to 80, but they do recommend 120 gigs. Um, and in this case, if you're going to move this file, split as a virtual disk, but because after we're done with this, I'm just going to destroy it. I'm going to store it as a virtual disk or a single disk. Okay. That's exactly what I want to call it. And we're good. So click finish. All right. Now, if you've ever watched any of these videos before, we are far from finished in setting this up. So go ahead and click edit virtual machine settings. All right, just verify that you have the correct memory, processor, hard drive. 
Okay, options, make sure that your version is the way you choose, Apple, and that you're UEFI, do not click on BIOS. Okay, so as long as you verify everything here is okay, click okay. And now we have to edit the VMX file here because we gotta add a few things. So as you can see here, we have to add these four lines, they are in the description below, to your VMX file. If you do not, it will not function properly and it'll just crash. All right, and again, here are the two links, again, that you see down below for our Big Sur and the Unlocker with Darwin Tools. All right, so how do we do that? It's very simple. Go into your section where you're gonna have your virtual machine. So in here, my virtual machines are all stored here. Here's my Big Sur, and here is my VMX. I prefer to use Notepad++, but you can use anything you want. So for example, if you wanna use Notepad, you're more than welcome to, all right? Go ahead and open that up, and you're gonna see all this crazy stuff in here, and we're gonna leave it all alone. Don't touch anything else in here, we're just adding to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this at the bottom. Go ahead and save. And now that everything's all been saved, go ahead and minimize that. All right, go ahead and close that out, because I won't need that anymore. Now we're gonna cross our fingers and hope it powers on. And if you got to this part so far, you are actually doing very well, probably better than most people. So this can take uh, about two or three minutes just to load again, depending on how your system's set up and that. So for me, I'm just gonna jump ahead a little bit in the video so we don't make this too long or any longer than it needs to be. Once everything's all loaded, we'll go ahead and select the language. Okay, now from here, we're gonna have to do what we normally do, because if we just go ahead and install Big Sur, it's gonna say it can't find a drive, and that's pretty much common with Macs. We have to actually format this drive. Click on Disk Utility. Okay, right up here is our virtual. See, it's 128. I'm going ahead and click the word Erase. Mac OS, I'll just put 11. Leave everything else the way it is. And as you can see, we are all ready to go now. Close out of that, click on install and continue. Go ahead and click continue, agree, keep agreeing, and here's our hard drive. Go ahead and click continue. Okay, now this will take the better part of 45 minutes. I believe when I did the last one, it took about 45 minutes and I think two reboots. So. Again, nobody wants to watch a video of 45 minutes of just this just chilling. So, I'm gonna go ahead and do some video magic. See you in a minute. Okay, so once everything's been installed, you're going to select your country or region and we're gonna go through the out-of-box experience. All right, now it can be a little bit slow doing this. Just have your, you know, a little bit of patience with it because we do have to install the tools later on. So, United States. And a lot of this stuff you probably should go through, customize, and choose what you want to do. Unfortunately for this video, I don't care enough for any of these accessibilities and all the other stuff. So I'm just going to breeze through this. But if this is your first time, I would recommend just verifying all this information. So migration, not now. No Apple ID. Skip, and as you can see, it is you know laggy on here again. That's due to my hardware a little bit and no VMware tools. All right, let's go ahead and get our stuff in. Okay, then go ahead and click continue. And we are almost there. Continue, continue. 
set up later. This will be something some people may be interested in. I'm going to disable Siri because I'm not going to use it and it will help it run just a smidge faster. Go ahead and choose your look. I'm going to go with the default. And then we're just going to wait for it to get to our desktop. And will you look at that? So I also have noticed that the first time of doing the installation, some things may not appear or pop up right away. Um, as you can see here, it's not populating a taskbar of any nature. That's fine. Do not be discouraged. Um, again, this stuff isn't supposed to be ran in a Windows environment. So getting this far, you're doing pretty well. Pat yourself on the back. You did a great job. But we're not done yet. Go ahead and just click shutdown. Reopen where you left off. That's fine. Also, like I've explained in other videos, if it doesn't turn off or doesn't reboot or doesn't do any of that nature, you can just go up here and then just make sure you hit shut down guest or power off. Um, it will not hurt the system any more than you know anything else would. So now we got to add Darwin tools before we reboot. Um, we can do it while we're booted in, but there's no reason to. Go ahead and edit CD, DVD, browse, Darwin ISO that you downloaded before with the pack. And then go ahead and power back on. Okay, so once you get to the desktop here, now you may experience a little bit of lag for this bar to show up. On the initial installation, a lot of things here are going to take some time to build. So if you're just greeted with an empty screen with just VMware tools on there and no bar, give it a few minutes. It will appear, I promise you. If it still doesn't appear after five minutes, then reboot the system and it will come. I've never had it not show up. Sometimes it does come up right away, um, but sometimes it doesn't. But that's only an initial reboot. Uh, once we get VMware tools installed and everything's all working properly, everything will start functioning properly here. So let's go ahead and get them installed. Go ahead and type in your password. All right, now you're going to be prompted with a um, security question. Come on. Go ahead and open security preferences. And then... Go ahead and click OK. Go ahead and do that. And then just allow VMware Inc. All right, don't do the restart now. And then we're waiting for this to finish. All right, once it's been finished, go ahead and hit the restart button. And then again, with a little bit of camera magic, So upon reboot, as you can see here, here's our login screen. I'll go ahead and enter full screen mode. Seeing the blur screen like that is fine. Do not worry about it. Go ahead and log in. And look at that. So I got my taskbar that popped up right away. VMware tools is good to go. Let's go ahead and get rid of that. And that's it. So everybody pat yourself on the back. You just got Big Sur installed. Simple, easy, painless, whatever it may be, but we all got it through and we did it together. And you can see users and groups. Login options. We have network servers we can go ahead and join up to. About this Mac here. Big Sur. So in conclusion, we were able to now download the ISO file, the custom ISO file created for this installation. We were able to set up our workstation or ESXi server to function properly with this. We were able to copy over, let me get this on the screen here. We were able to copy all this information, okay, right over to our um, VMX file. So these ones, as you can see here, I have this needs to be done if you're doing Mojave, Catalina, or Big Sur. 
Okay. And we got VMware tools installed. So now everything all functions and works. And let's just go ahead and just check out Safari real quickly. Now again, depending on how much RAM you have, CPU power you have to this, this may not be the fastest computer you're going to run. But if you need it for something, as you can see here, you have the capabilities of doing it. So I hope the video helped out somebody. I hope everybody likes the video. Uh, my next one, I'm going to do uh, 12. I'm going to do the new beta that came out. So hopefully I'll get my hands on a copy of that ISO soon. Do another video about how to install the new Mac beta on there. And we'll go from there, guys. So have a good night. I'll catch you guys in the next video.